Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is the match preview. Wales versus Republic of Ireland in the UEFA Nations League in Cardiff. I'm joined by Jer Brown. Jer, how are you and how are you feeling going into this game? I'm good, Paul. It's great to be here. Um, I suppose, yeah, like a lot of people, obviously, a little bit disappointed if we wish uh, Thursday night. I suppose the result, we probably never really expected to get much from the game. Um, I think probably just the performance was a little bit disappointing and to be honest, if England really wants it, they could have beaten us by more. But look, we have to park that and move on. Ultimately, in the day, England have traditionally always been a couple of steps above us and they definitely are at the moment. This is the game, yeah. Wales, a team we know very well. Obviously, when we played them last month, drew that game at the Aviva. I suppose it looked like a lot of people, we just want to see, I suppose, a goal. But it's been so long, we want to see a positive result to kind of carry a bit of momentum and confidence. And as I touched on, like there's a lot of familiarity between these two teams. That game and the Aviva... We played quite well. You have to remember it was difficult. We had all the COVID cases, the setback of losing to Slovakia and the disappointment of that. So can't exactly say we're in a great place going into it. But we put in a good performance, I thought, that day. Like a lot of our games, just lacked a little bit of quality up front. Um, they never really threatened, never really hurt us. It's only, it's only points they've dropped in this group. But yeah, hopefully it comes 7 o'clock tomorrow even we'll have more to cheer about than we have in our, our previous couple of games over the last couple of months. I think that's it, isn't it? I, I think... A lot of people just worried the fact that we haven't been scoring any goals and, and I think that's been the only real downfall. I think if we were scoring more goals, I think people wouldn't be as pessimistic. But the fact is, we're creating chances, but we're just not putting the ball in the net. And I think that's ultimately why people are so uh, anti-Stephen Kenny at the moment, which is it's frustrating, I know, because we all want to see us win and we all want to see us score goals and stuff like that. But I think ultimately it's just... The ball just hasn't gone in the net. I think we've had chances and I think we've created chances, obviously not against England, but in all the other games, I felt as though we were probably the better team in those games. Yeah, I totally agree. I think the last three matches, particularly in October, like we had a couple of great chances in that Savaka game, as we well know, which Howard Hank cleared off the line, Brown hit the post. Um, Horgan Maguire had a couple of decent sightings. In that, uh, Shane Long in particular actually had a very good header, chance for the header in the second half in that game. And in Finland, yeah, like only for the fact that we gave away a soppy goal, we didn't actually really do a lot wrong that night. But like just the issue in terms of scoring goals, I know it's frustrating, but it's not like as if we had a reputation for scoring a bag full of goals prior to this. I think we only scored something like seven goals in the last campaign and three of them against Gibraltar, like a team you should be scoring three goals in one half, not two matches. So, and like, at the end of the day, like Stephen Kenny, he doesn't have a transfer market. He can suddenly just get a magic wand and flick it over our strikers and suddenly start making them goal scorers. They're not even proven to be doing it for the club. So it's a difficult, tricky situation. And like you said, yeah, if, if we had a goal scorer, if Robbie Keane happened to be 10, 15 years younger, but look, that's not going to happen. We would have more points. We would have positive results. And there would be a bit more fight. Because I, as you said, I don't think the performances have been that bad. And I certainly think back to like, right, have we got any worse so far under Stephen Kenny? No. Well, there hasn't maybe been a savage amount of progress. We haven't got any worse. And if anything, we are a little bit better to watch now. You can see what we're trying to do. There's a bit of an identity and an idea to our play. No, I think that's it. I just think the fact that we just haven't scored, I think if we start scoring goals, I think things are looking yeah. at totally different. Even if we're losing, I just think if we're scoring the goals, I think people view it much differently and they're more optimistic. It's just the fact that, and as you said, we don't have someone who's proven to put the ball in the, in the net time and time again. Whereas you look at like someone like, I don't know, Wales, they always have, they have like someone like Gareth Bale who they can depend on. Um, you know, England have a hat full of names that they can depend on. You could probably say Scotland, Northern Ireland, uh, we're kind of in that bracket at the moment. I think, I think if you're looking at England and Wales, they're probably ahead of us. But I think in the last game against Wales, I thought we were the better team. And if you kind of look at overall, and Stephen Kenny said at his press conference earlier on today, that if you look overall, marginally, we were the better team on, on the day. And, you know, up until the point where McLean got sent off, I thought we could have probably, you know, edged that game in the last 10 minutes. But McLean got sent off and we had to make a couple of substitutions. So, like, so Josh Cullen, that came in. But I think going into this game, there, there's a lot of players out missing. You know, Enda Stevens is out missing. Alan Brown's out missing. James McCarthy, Seamus Coleman. Uh, Callum Robinson, Aaron Connolly, that's just a few off the top of my head. And then you've got players who've came in today, uh, trained with the squad tonight, you know, Ryan Manning, Jack Byrne. And then today there was players called in, Josh Cullen, um, Jason Knight as well from the other 21s. 
So there's a lot of players that have been called. I'm, I'm forgetting a couple I know. Oh, Kieran Clark and uh, Daryl Lanahan as well. So uh, John Egan going out of the squad, who will be a big loss. I don't care what anybody says, you know, Premier League defender and has been a very good partner in defence with Shane Duffy. So And he's been a kind of mainstay as well since Richard Keogh got injured. So if you're looking at it in that sense, we, we kind of have a squad that we're not used to seeing that will be playing. Now, again, I know we were... We were kind of depleted a little bit. I think people forget that Matt Doherty went to centre-back against Wales for the majority of the game. That's um, right, yeah. Did John Egan get injured in that game too? Or, oh, no, that was Kevin Lowe. It was, yeah. So, like, we we played them with with a, with a team that we're not, knows, uh, we're not, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? We're not used to playing with. And then we had Cyrus Christie playing right back, who actually played well that day. And I was very critical against England, how he played. But I thought on the night against... Um, against Wales he was actually quite good and it, and that day we were missing a lot of players too through COVID you got to remember I think John Egan was ruled out Callum Robinson and there was a couple, Alan Brown I think was one as well that's right yeah and there was one more but we had we went up against them and I know they were missing Gareth Bale but they did have Ramsey in there as well who's one of their seasoned pros but if you're going like you're looking at this game tomorrow and they probably have Gareth Bale back but do you fear them as probably much as you would have in recent years? And I know Gareth Bell's back, but he hasn't been playing that much. No, he's only the last couple of games played with Spurs and obviously set out the USA game on Thursday night, but I don't think you can read anything into that game. They gave a lot of fringe players. Uh, they only had four players playing to play against us. Um, do I really, I've never really traditionally feared Wales because even going back as far as when we played them under Steve Staunton, which would be my area's memory of playing them, I always felt we were a better team than them. It's only maybe the last five or six years that they've become a par in us or probably passed us out since Chris Bowman took us over. And Obviously, that campaign, we had a good record against them. We took the four points. The only game where they've really gave us a lesson was the opening game of the Nations League in Cardiff in 2018 when they bet us 4-1. I know they bet us in the Aviva that also as well with Harry Wilson's free kick, but it was a much closer game and I wouldn't say it was a great Irish performance, but you could see there was a little bit of heart and a little bit of effort in that Irish performance, which wasn't evident in a lot of the games towards the end of the O'Neill era. era. No, I, I still wouldn't fear them. I know they're going well in this campaign um, with 10 points. You know, they've no goals conceded, um, winning three matches, but like they only scored three goals themselves. For a team that's top of the group, that's a very low return. They're all coming towards the end of a game, so they obviously have a great kind of belief and mindset that they can still eke out a victory. And then themselves also got a bit of a pace of England last month. They were beaten 3-0 as well by them. So they're not a long way ahead of us. Um, you did mention obviously that Aaron Rams in that game. Ben Davis as well, I think, would be another player that would be of a high standard, obviously playing with Spurs. But you look through the rest of their team, like so Conor Roberts, he's with Swansea. Kiefer Moore was with... Um, He's with Cardiff, Matthew Smith, the promising young lad from Man City, but he's on loan with Doncaster League One, uh, Eaton Ampadu, in and out of the Sheffield United team. So there's not really many standout players apart from Gareth Bale, which is the weird thing is with him is it doesn't matter, as we've seen with Real Madrid, he can go weeks without playing football. When he puts on that red shirt, he just becomes a different man and he just hopes he doesn't do that again tomorrow. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Um, I, I, I know he trained a couple of days ago, but I haven't heard anything since. And I was trying to find out on kind of the Wales site, was there anything? And I couldn't see anything. You've got to remember, they have David Brooks as well and Harry Wilson. That's right. Quite good for them as well. So they do have, I, would, I wouldn't say, you know, players that you would say, oh my God, but they do have players that could probably hurt us if we if we don't play to our strengths. Now, I think someone who definitely needs to play this game, and it was evident in the Wales game at home, is Jason Malumbi. Just what he gives us in midfield is something that we've been lacking for so, so long. And the way he gets on the ball, he, he's always looking to give it to someone you know, on his team. Uh, he doesn't play safe. If he can get it forward, he will try to get it forward. And if he can't get it forward, he'll try to run with it. And he'll bring the, for bring the ball forward for us. And I don't think any of our midfielders do that. And the fact now is... I would imagine that Conor Herrhoon will be the one that sits. And then with Alan Brown out of the team, I wonder if Hendrick will be that one that kind of is that attacking midfielder. And then you have Malumbi as that other midfielder, um, probably sitting in a deeper position that Hendrick was doing the other night against England. I think that's probably how we'll line up the midfield. Now, the only thing is, I, w I would like to see, but it probably won't happen. I, I obviously did the start 11 show last night without knowing the likes of Jason Knight was going to come into the team. But I wouldn't mind seeing Jason Knight 
coming in. I would like to see Jack Byrne off the bench maybe in the second half. But what are your kind of thoughts looking at Malumbi um, in that midfield? Do you feel like he has to play? Yeah, I think you pretty much said everything that I kind of agree with myself there. I think so. I was saying this to a mate of mine as well yesterday. I think what's holding this Malumbi back, which is no fault of his own at the moment from a regular start with Ireland, is the lack of club football, which I find baffling because even the odd time he's played for Brighton in cup games, like that game against United, he played well. He's played well for us. He's a very, very good player. Brighton aren't exactly backing up trees in the Premier League moment, so I can't understand how he's not getting more of a run with them or why Graham Potter just hasn't loaned him back because he's too good of a player not to play in football. But for me, as you said, like he's just... He brings something that we haven't had an Irish team in so long. He suits the style that Stephen Kenny would have played on the previous teams, particularly with Dundalk. He looks such a good player. He was our man in the match in that game against Wales. For me, yeah, I really want to see him come in and start. You touched on Jason Knight. It is an interesting one. Surely Jason Knight has to feature in one of these two games. Or why call him up and deprive him from the 21s from their t- two of the biggest games that we've played at that level in God knows how long. So he has, as he said, I think he has to feature at some stage. Jack Byrne, yeah, as you said, maybe not even, maybe starting, but as you said, at least bring him on. Throw him in there, like, see what he's, see what he's like at this level, because we've seen at the League of Ireland level, he is a bit above our league. He has got class, he has got quality. I think he can go back and do something similar to what he done in Dutch, or in the, the Dutch Air Division, and what Josh Cullen is doing now. Go to a league like that and be very impressive. And he's another player as well I would like to see start tomorrow. He's playing regularly with Anderlecht. He starts every game. I know it's not the Anderlecht of old. It's still a decent standard, the Belgian Pro League. Teams regularly in Champions League, Europa League, so it's a good standard. I'd like to see him start. You touched about Conor Hurrahan starting. I don't really want to kind of like go name out players and stuff like that, but I'm beginning to kind of struggle and just see what he offers our midfield. He just kind of... I almost kind of nearly say go hiding. I'm just kind of struggling to see what he kind of offers us. I'm worried about him as well with his situation at Aston Villa because after what was a good start to the season for him, they then signed Ross Barkley. He has a wonder game against Liverpool. He continues to play every week now because of that and he is playing well in fairness to Barkley. But her hand's been frozen out by Aston Villa and it is worrying to kind of see. And I just feel maybe that has affected his confidence and you could just kind of see it on him on, when, on Thursday night. So I would like to see maybe even, I know it's an important game, we need three points to try and give us any chance for second seed, but I wouldn't mind seeing, even if it is going to be an experienced midfield, I still wouldn't like to see, like, mind seeing Josh Cullen and Jason Malone be starting tomorrow. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. I would like to see some freshness into the team. I think, yeah. I think, you more, I think you'll more see a freshness to the team probably against Bulgaria. But the thing is, and the key is here, because obviously I'm going to get up the, uh, the group stats here now on screen there. So as you can see, you know, we need to get some results because <laughs> Bulgaria are on one point. We're on two, two draws. We need we, we need to get a result because if if Bulgaria get any sort of result against Finland, the pressure is all on us then to go against them. You know, uh, when we played them on Wednesday. So I fully believe that we could get a result in Cardiff if we actually you know show what we're about. I think the players should be hurting after that result against England. You know, I know it was a friendly and everything like that. But at the same time, pride was at stake and we got, humi- well, I wouldn't say humiliated, but we got spanked. And yeah. you, you'd you be hoping that a lot of the players would be hurting. And a lot of the players, you like to see Malumbis and McLeans and these types of players who really take pride in wearing that Irish jersey. I wonder now, will they step up and, you know, put in a performance and, and try maybe get a goal or something and, and just say, right, we'll put this right. We're going to go to Bulgaria and win and get two wins out of the last two games. And then we can start finishing this international period on a real high and then look forward to March because after every result, it's Kenny out. It's yeah. this fella is out of his depth. The squad is terrible. You know, it's the worst team I've seen ever. And they're not really because I don't really actually look at this team and think they're any worse than the team under Trapatoni, for example. I think. You know, obviously that team under Trapattoni had Robbie Keane and Richard Dunn and stuff like that. But the kind of rest of the players around, other than those players, and they were real leaders at the time. Let's not forget, there's John O'Shea you throw in there as well, Shea Given, Damien Duff. They were all in there too. But they were kind of coming to the end. But when you kind of look through that, you know, a lot of the players that were in the squad around that time were probably at the level of a lot of our players now. The only thing is you're missing the players and leaders I've, I've, I've said there, you know. So... 
I think it's a bit of a tough one for Stephen Kenny. It's not really his fault. He's came in, he's inherited this group of players and he's tried to bring in his own kind of players and style. He's brought in players from the 21s and I was only looking at it earlier on. The players that he's already kind of brought through or the players that have been brought through since he's been 21 manager, you know, Kelleher has been brought up to the squad. He hasn't been capped yet, but he's been brought up to the squad. Then you have O'Shea, you have Leo O'Connor, you've got Malumbi, you've got uh, Knight, you've got... Did I say O'Shea already? I think I did. Um, yeah, just when you said Leo Connor there, he would have been capped under Mick. Yeah, but he, he was... Stephen brought me in as an under-21 manager. They all started to kind of go on from there, is what I'm saying? So yeah, they, yeah. They, were, they were all kind of brought in. Then you had uh, Troy, Aaron, Adam Eda, all of them as well. I'm sure there's probably a couple of missing as well. But the fact is, we're starting to see signs of players progressing through our youth ranks, which... A lot of the time we hadn't seen in the past. And now we're starting to see, fr- you know, the fruition of that. So people, I think, as well as that, we need to be patient. A lot of these players now, since Stephen came in that Toulon tournament, a lot of those players started getting first team football at their clubs, and now they're really starting to kind of get a run of games and get played a lot. Like literally, I would say ninety percent of that squad after that Toulon tournament went back, and now have, since that tournament they've been playing for their club you know, if it's championship or whatever, but a lot of them, and it really helped their development. And I think Stephen's going to start bringing in more of them, I think, as time goes on. But if we can finish this international break, you know, one nil goal with Shane Duffy on the end of it from a set piece, that gets his season up and running. That, you know, that gets Stephen Kenny up and running. I know he scored Stephen's first goal and only goal since he's been in charge, but we just need to see a goal tomorrow. I don't care if it goes in off someone's arse. We have to score. We just have to score. We've, we've never cared how goals are going in for Ireland. We definitely won't in this situation. Hmm. Justin, first thing on the squad, about going back to Trapatoni, I actually definitely, the last campaign on Trapatoni, qualifying 2014 World Cup, like when a good few players actually, even some of them players you named, even retired after your 2012. The squad was no better than it is now. Like So I, I don't agree this, this is the worst squad we've ever had in so long. And just even your point about the 21s, you know, about after that too long tournament, a lot of them went on to play first-team football. But the thing that impressed me the most is the standard. A lot of them started breaking into Premier League and Championship clubs, which is unheard of for Ireland under 21 players. You look back to the last squad under Noel King, he was picking players from non-league, League 1 and League 2. Like, Just honestly forget about it. Like, So it, there is, as you said, great, great signs of progress. And when you are starting to bring through young players into a new team, it's always going to take time. You just have to look at Wales, under Chris Coleman, even the process they're going through now, or just any sport in general, even if you want to maybe make reference to the Irish rugby team of the late 90s, early 2000s, when that golden generation came through, it took them a while to get results. And it's the same thing that's going to happen here as well. And as you mentioned, like that's a good list of, of players that are coming through, and it's positive to see. And they're only going to learn and benefit. Like, well, like a lot of people were giving that, Adam Mead a lot of criticism the night, which I think is very, very harsh for a 19-year-old that hasn't played much football this season in the Championship against two established Premier League centre-backs. He was never going to win that battle. I'm not being harsh, just it's most logical point towards that. But he's going to learn so much now. It's going to bring him on so much that he's going to learn from, from that and it's going to make him better and stronger. And that's the thing that Stephen Kenny touched on. As you said, just to get that bit of confidence, if we can get a win, if we can get a win tomorrow and if all the results go away that Finland beat Bulgaria and we're at least guaranteed third spot, it takes the pressure off kind of the Bulgaria game. And as you said, we can kind of relax. They're not on our coattails heading into that game. It doesn't make it a must win. Win these last two matches. If it's not enough to get a second season, we're still up being third seed. So what? I don't care. At least we're ending this international period, ending this international year, going into March on a positive, on a high, and people can be telling you, looking back on them last two games, right, there's something to build on. That's all we really want. Look after ourselves and let the rest, our seedings, draw, everything else, that'll take care of itself. Yeah, and I think he wanted to call up Gavin Bazunu as well. He wanted to call him up, but obviously he wanted to keep him with the 21. So that's another yeah. player who I foresee in the future being in the squad as well. He's obviously doing quite well at Rochdale. And uh, Stephen obviously has high hopes for him as well. So you, yeah, you take it to the equation before. Really good goalkeepers coming up there through the ranks at the moment too. Travers uh, and O'Hara as well. Travers needs to start playing obviously at the club level before he can feature probably uh, international level yeah. for us. But uh, yeah, I think... As well as that, Jared, just on a positive note, Finland beat France the other night. I think That's right. Yeah. So, yeah. we 
we're the better team against Finland. I keep saying that we were the better team, and ultimately it's going to be up to the players to, to show that with results in the future. But Darren Randolph basically gave them a goal. He came out and said it afterwards. You know, he apologised actually on our Instagram. But he basically gave the goal away. We weren't really troubled by them other than that. Obviously, we were in the game previously, but that was honestly watching that and being in the stadium. It was like watching a pre-season training. It was that bad. Um, it just wasn't a good game, and obviously with no fans there as well, it was just it was just really bad. But I'm looking yeah. at the the last time we played Finland and Wales, we were the better team against both. And as I just mentioned, there Finland beat France the other night. Um, <laughs> you know, World Cup champions, and then you have uh, what's it, Wales, top of our group, and we played them. I I thought we were better than them. Or we matched them, especially with the squad. Probably wasn't our first squad and. They probably didn't have theirs out at the, on the same day as well, but I felt as though they had more players that they would have probably expected to start than we did. Another key thing is they don't have Ryan Giggs for this game as well. He won't be there because uh, the alleged incident we won't get into. But so so there is those factors as well. But the, as you said, there we're we're playing well against these teams. Obviously, we got hammered against England. And you know you just got to accept that we got hammered, and um, there's no point dwelling on that. We we move on from that. But if you're looking at the other games, there's definitely positives to take. But we need to take those positives into tomorrow's game, and we need to get a goal, and at least try get a win. You know, I, I could say sit here now and say a draw would be disappointing, but probably uh, looking at it, if we were one 0 down and we got a one all draw, I'd be delighted. But I would like to see us win. I would like to see. I keep saying this every single game. Is I would like to see us take the lead in the game just to see what we would be like, and um, it hasn't happened yet. Um, I say yeah because I hope it will. I think Stephen Brady, uh, Stephen, I'm just calling him Stephen Brady. I think Stephen Kenny needs a break. Uh, he needs something. He's so unlucky with everything that's gone on since he's came into the job. You know, Aaron Connolly missing uh, the Slovakia game. Adam Eda missing it as well for sitting too close to someone on a plane and not knowing that they had a test or uh, tested positive. For a test, it's ridiculous. Like, just needs you just hope some luck comes Stephen Kenny's way, and you would like to see it because obviously, myself and yourself, we've interviewed him before, we've dealt with him personally. And he, like, he's a really intelligent man, he's a really smart man, and he's a really nice man. So, you want to see someone yeah. like that succeed, you know? Like, I, I see all these people who want to bash him just for the sake for, of bashing him and just not getting behind him because they just look, oh, League of Ireland manager. Oh, not up to the task but that's a lot of people's mentality you know yeah and like even listen to ex-players always come out ex-players always come out and said so much positive thoughts about him I was listening to an old podcast with Paddy McCourt with Simon Ferry on Open Gold today and he was on about his time at Derry and he says even then you could just see and he said like he's going to go on to bigger and better things in the future and, and he is at the moment and obviously as you said hopefully that he will um that he'll work out from it. But as you just said, like that, I do agree with you. I think just getting that goal tomorrow, because as you said, like, as we've seen in the game, the Viva, we could play well tomorrow, we could own most of the ball, we could create a couple of chances and keep their key players quiet and it could still finish nil nil. And everyone, the, the main headline would be Ireland break record for six games out of goal. So I think get that. As you said, it's a long time since you, you just touched on there, even taking the lead in the game. Like, it's a long, long time since Ireland in general have led in a competitive match. Um, I think it's if you exclude the Gibraltar game, it's the Georgia game where Conor Horan got the free kick. Like So, yeah, as you said, I'd like to see, will we kind of sit back and just kind of hold on to the, or will the players grow and kick on from this and kind of back themselves and believe themselves? Because, as you said, it just needs that one little break where finally we can kind of get a goal, we can get a positive result. Like, if the game finishes 1-1 tomorrow, I know it's not a game we'll win, but it's a goal, and if we play positive, I think that would definitely really help. And then suddenly, it'd be going into the Bulgaria game Right, like what can we work on from the last game? Because everyone just kind of seems to want to dwell on the negative. And as you said, like a lot of people call him for Stephen Kenny out after like six games. When let's be honest, it, this is at least a two-year project, if not longer. Like you look at Wales under Coleman, his first campaign was a write-off. Michael O'Neill under Northern Ireland, same thing. They got it right. Like so it's going to take time for a manager that hasn't been at an international level to adapt to that as well. Like so, just. We need it. Like it doesn't. It doesn't really help when you have people kind of on your back in your own country. I can't understand that like, we all should be together. Like, um, so it doesn't help as well. But you said if you just just get that one little bit of luck and break tomorrow. And also another thing as well that we had to deal with is the retirement of Dave McGoldrick. Yes, maybe not a goal scorer, but he's been our best player over the last while. Phenomenal in the playoffs. He's 
you know, the way he holds up the ball, his touch, the way he can bring players into the play, his control, like he's a big, big loss. And the fact as well that he came out of the blue and so soon before his international break would have been set back because he would have surely been planning for him to play in a couple of these matches and find out a week beforehand that he was hanging up his boots wouldn't have helped either. Now, maybe he might have told him in advance, and obviously before he made the statement public, possibly, but still, I don't think he would have foreseen this at the end of the October international break. Yeah, it's a tough one. Um, but do you think Stephen Kenny is actually maybe affected by the fact that there's no fans in the ground? Like, do you think, and the players, maybe the fact that, you know, obviously it's well known how, how much the Ireland fans drive the team on. Do you think that might be a factor as well? Or do you think just we're just not scoring and it's just <laughs> the ball just won't go in? I think so, but I suppose the only, the only issue and problem is like every team that is maybe going through a bit of a problem at the moment could probably point and say the same thing. But I would kind of agree with you because I think that first game against Finland, the Aviva, you touched on it there, it was, you found it such a sad and a strange occasion. Even when you're at the game, you still felt it was just wrong with no fans. Like I think that would have been a great occasion because I think there would have been a great buzz and a great hype because a new manager in charge and the start of a new era and the new players coming in and this new style of play and the fact that the Bulgaria game, okay, it wasn't a win, but it was a result and we got a goal and there was stuff to take away from it. I think there would have been a good buzz and a good crowd. And like you said, yeah, it sometimes can carry you over the line, like down through the years, traditionally even go back as far as mixed last campaign, like how much does the crowd play a massive impact in that Denmark and Switzerland game when we fell 1-0 behind? And we fell behind 1-0 in both them games in the last 20 minutes. I say if you ask the players, like because the crowd never gave up, we got behind the team and just kind of drove the team on. Like That had to play a part in us getting them two late equalisers. I know we didn't win the game, but that's you know we still ends up with positive results. So I do think, yeah, possibly but it's it's the same for everyone it kind of some people might say it's it's sour grace but i do think definitely the finland game would have been a big occasion um the wales game like you know as you see it yourself wales always bring a good crowd over here it's a bit of a derby i know it might be a friendly derby but it's a bit of a derby it creates a good buzz great good atmosphere that was a cracking day as well things like that can sometimes add up like um but overall in general i suppose everyone is in the same picture um but sure, look, hopefully the fans will be back for some of the qualifiers for the World Cup the next campaign. Well, you'd like to think by March, you know, something will be sort, sorted out at the very least. I know Northern Ireland had a thousand fans in at their game the other night, so you'd like to think that something could be sorted out. But just to lastly finish on, just kind of, uh, well, just on, a, on the form, really, um, there's the, the, the form there. Um, win, win, draw, win. Uh, Wales, draw, loss, draw, loss us um obviously we were the draw against wales but just in regards your prediction just to finish off on what is your score prediction and goal scorer for ireland if you have yeah a goal you just scorer. um just in like in terms of wales or you touched on as well obviously with geeks not being there how much of an impact that's going to have and they're heading into uncertainty now to a major tournament we, we don't know what's going to happen right Geeks, we're not obviously going to get into it we don't know enough about it but there is a possibility he mightn't be at a major tournament. So Robert Payne, or Robert Page, sorry, who was in charge Thursday night, would be in charge tomorrow. It is a bit of a tricky situation for them. Bale didn't play in that USA game. I imagine he'll play tomorrow. They only had four players that played in that game that played against us. There was a lot of youngsters uh, that got to run out the likes of Brandon Johnson, got a debut and stuff like that. Expect the likes of Bale, Jonathan Davis, Nico Williams, David Brooks, Ethan Ampadu, Ben Davis. Expect all them players to come back in. Just as I mentioned, interesting as well on Wales, I mentioned they're not great goal scorers, but they actually hold a distinct record, along with Slovenia in League C and Gibraltar in League D. They're the only teams not to concede a goal in this um, campaign. So very similar resemblance to, you remember Chris Coleman, when, when Bale's getting all them goals to get them to Euros, they were absolutely watertight at the back. That hasn't changed. So for a team that isn't scoring goals up against a team that isn't conceding goals, it's hard to be a bit optimistic. But look, you have to believe that things will finally go away, something will fall away. Like we are creating chances, excuse the England game, because they have just ridiculous options at the moment. They have players that weren't even in their squads that would walk into our team. Um so just ignore that game. Look at the games that we've been playing against equal standard like Wales and Finland in this Nations League, Savak in the playoff. We're in the games, we're creating chances. We just need a little bit of luck. Maybe even just a little bit of composure and not panic. That's something I'm gonna be a little bit worried about tomorrow because obviously the players will know about this they're not going to be, they can't ignore the media, it's in their face. They just hope that they get themselves in a good position, they aren't going to kind of just panic lit because it can happen when 
things aren't going your way in front of goal. But yeah, look, hopefully um, we can get a goal. Everything kind of points towards Ireland scoring from a set piece. Like I think five or last six goals in competitive games have been headers. The only exception was a known goal against Gibraltar. So hopefully that might change. Hopefully my carve Wales open and score a goal. But um, I don't think we'll win because I just think Wales are a pretty decent team. I think confidence-wise we aren't quite there. But uh, I think a 1-1 draw is realistic and I think that'll be good. And if Finland can beat Bulgaria and that means Leeds was going into that Bulgaria game knowing that at least a draw will get third. But ideally we obviously want to win. Would be good. So I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw and I'm going to go for goal scorer of Jeff Hendrick. Ooh. I just want to be different. I don't want to go with a defender. I just want something different. Ideally, could it be Adam Ida, please, or someone, or even if it's whoever comes on tomorrow off the bench. You know who might be a good show for you? Ronan Curtis. Because he's looked good off the bench a few times he's come off the bench. Yeah. And he's obviously, he's a, he's a bit of goal scoring. He's probably one of our few players. I know it's League One standard, but he's one of our few players that actually is in a bit of goal scoring form. Scored a brace for Portman in the FA Cup against Ipswich last week. So, yeah, he has made a decent impact off the bench. He's one of them players. I'm surprised he hasn't gotten moved to the championship just yet. Hopefully it will work out for him that way. But, yeah, um, ideally it would be great for someone like Adam Eda to get him off the mark straight away and that he can kind of then kick off his international career. would be absolutely uh, fantastic. Or, you know, even for a bit of League of Ireland uh, favouritism, if Jack Burns come off the bench and get one, would be fantastic as well, which is... Strange, uh, Shamrock Rovers or St. Pat's fan wants in Shamrock Rovers player to score, but you look, it's Ireland for all one tomorrow night. Well, this is it. I think as well with Jack, the fact that he's played against Ace Milan, the likes, and didn't struggle, I think yeah. Stephen might have that in the back of his mind and say, you know what, I could actually play him in this game because Wales, um, they're not amazing in midfield. When they, if they do have Joe Allen and uh, Aaron Ramsey playing, then maybe you'd look at that. But if if they're not playing, then. I wouldn't really fear too much in maybe throwing Jack in there, but I'll give my score prediction. I'm going to go for a 1 0 win to Ireland. They're going to be optimistic, and I'm going to go with. Who am I going to go with the goal scorer? Uh, James McLean. Yeah, of course, he has history of scoring in Cardiff as well. I think the fact that he got sent off the last game and stuff, I think he's going into this game with a point to prove, you know, and obviously coming off the back of the England result as well. So I think he's going into this game with a point to prove and he could likely start in this game or if he does come off the bench, as I say, he'll have a point to prove with the Bulgaria game in mind on Wednesday. So, and he's yeah. going to score for Stoke as well. So let's not forget that too. So he's not coming in just kind of, off a, off a bad run of form, like he probably would have been under mix rain. Um, this time he's actually coming in off good form for Stoke, so we could see we'll see what happens. As I say, they they've got a few good players mixed around Ben da- Ben Davis at left back, then obviously the midfield as I mentioned, and Gareth Bale. So yeah, I mean we've got our own players, but they need to step up to the mark on this occasion. So hopefully we can get a result, whether it's a one-one win as Gary likes to call them, the draws a win, um, or a one-nil win. I I just hope that we get a positive result tomorrow. That's all yeah. I'm really hoping for, you know. And maybe hopefully, as we touched on there, maybe hopefully the Ryan Geek situation has affected them a little bit and that could play in, in our favour as well tomorrow. Yeah, definitely. Well, um, I think we'll leave it at that. Jay, thanks very much Perfect. for joining me. Um, you're actually no going to be joining me you're going to be joining me tomorrow for the watch along. So if anyone's watching this, make sure to come and join us for the watch along. We'll be watching the game on the youtube channel so make sure as well if you're new to the channel that you subscribe so you get an alert when we do go live don't forget to give the video a like as well thanks very much jer no worries uh just finally as well just before we sign off paul as well just want to wish Jim crawford and all the ones as well uh best of luck tomorrow because it's a huge huge game for ireland as well tomorrow so let's hope we get the two wins and our under ones are one step closer to qualifying for their first ever major tournament absolutely i'll be at that myself before we go live uh, on yeah. youtube tomorrow so Take care, guys, and thanks for joining us. All the best. Come on, you boys in green.